Hello, Donna here. In today's video, we're going to be making some of these cute little clock faces. All you need to make these little clock faces are some off cuts of patterned paper, a gold tip pen of some sort, and a white gel pen. This particular jelly roll pen is in white and it's Jelly Roll 10. I find this one of the better qualities that when you write on a, a dark colored background, that is just one coverage. You don't have to go over it and over it and over it to get it to show up really white. That's just done once. So that's a good brand. The gold pen to get this the clock hands, I've just used the gold edge using the marker to get these little clock hands or you can use real clock hands from a watch. You can buy these mixed watch parts off eBay and they are used for mixed media. You'll need a one and a half inch circle punch. You can make it smaller if you've only got a one inch circle punch or a one and a quarter inch circle punch. You can make this clock face in whatever size you like. You can put a flower on it if you don't want to put watch hands. Once you've made a few of these little clock faces, you just put them aside and when you're making something in your journal, you can just grab one of these and just glue it in wherever it works and fits for you. So we're just going to start by cutting out some of the clock faces. It doesn't matter how you cut it out because you can turn it any way you like. So you cut out a couple of these. And I'm only using paper. You don't need to use cardboard. You can use a light cardboard if you want. But you don't need anything too heavy. So we'll just do a few different ones just so that you know, you know, like you can make this up to work with any style journal that you like. I think the darker the background works good for this, especially with the white jelly pen. I'm just going to use my cutting mat to freehand on my numbers. If you've got little sticker numbers, you can use the sticker numbers to put around on here. But the whole idea of using this with the jelly pen is so that you can freehand everything. So I'm just going to put my circle in one of these squares so that I can use that line there and I'll put my circle in the middle of it. So I can see a line there and a line there. Might be a little bit harder for you to see because my mat's starting to wear out a bit. And I've got a line there and a line there on the edge and a line there and a line there. So I can see that that is my center point here. So I'm going to just put a little dot for the center point. And you can see how good this jelly roll marker works. So at the top, there's my center line right there. I'm just going to mark the 12. Then I'm going to come to this line over here and mark the 3. The six at the bottom and the nine over here. Then I'm just going to fill in the two numbers in between. They don't have to be accurate because this is just using this for ephemera. I'm just going to complete this all the way around and don't touch the numbers because this stays wet for a little while. All right, so that's that one and I'll just keep going. All 
we can use the same paper to put the hands on. So say for this one here, which is this paper here, you can do it two ways. You can make it a solid gold or you can just do the edge. Doing the edge is a little fiddly, but it still works and it looks pretty good. So you just get your ruler. I use the Scotch retractable blade and I just cut off a skinny piece of the cardstock, the matching cardstock, and it's quite narrow. I didn't measure it at all, I just cut it. Using the gold 2mm tip, it doesn't have to be a thick tip like this, it can be whatever style gold pen you've got. It's got to be like a, a marker type of thing, or you can use your gold finger or anything like that that you've got, as long as it puts a nice thin gold line around the edge. You can use silver, you can use any, any colour that goes with your project. But this gold here looks like this, so it finishes nice and shiny. I just hold my disc in my left hand and I hold my pen on probably less than a 45 degree angle, just a little bit less. And I use the side of the felt pen to just glide around here and I do a few little strokes backwards and forwards like I'm coloring in. Then I turn my disc around. Then I do the next section, turn it again and do the next section. Doing it this way ensures that I get a really nice thin line on the edge. If you try and go around in big pieces, it does work out to be a bit harder to get a thin line. Okay, so you can see that thin line there. I'll show you again. Little thin backwards and forwards, turn it. Thinner backwards and forwards, turn it. And just keep going around it until you're back at the beginning. You might have a really juicy gold pen and you might need to only pass your pen around the edge once, then move it once, then move it. I have to do mine a couple of times because my pen's not that juicy. And if I try to get more gold down into the felt tip here, it just flows out everywhere. So I, that's why I use my pen like this. All right, we're back at the start. And we've got that lovely gold edge on the clock face. And we'll do a little bit of a different method for the clock hands. It's a lot harder to do the clock hands. If you find it difficult, just fill in the whole lot. You can see here I've got two strips. This one's very thin. The clock would look good with very thin hands, but to put a thin line of gold on either side of this thin strip here, yeah, you know, that would be quite difficult. So make it a little bit wider and I just hold it between my fingers like this and I come in on an angle this way, holding it a little bit tight. and just put that thin line there, going backwards and forwards again. And there I've got my thin line on there. It's hard to see this on camera, so I'll, I'll pop a photo in here. Turn it around and do the same on the other side. Just coming up that tiny amount on the top of that strip. And that'll give you a nice edge of gold on either side of this skinny little strip with still a little bit of the 
cardboard or the clock face color in the middle. Now, if you mess this up and it becomes too uneven or you're not happy with it, you think, no, nah, that didn't work for me at all, just get your, your pen, hold it there and just color it all in all the way. That will work and it'll still look pretty good. Because you really only need a very small amount. You don't need more than an one and a half inches or so to make your clock hands per clock face. And then all you gotta do is trim up the, the hands and then redo the ends once you've cut the hands. Right, so we can cut that off there because that's where we've got the, the nice two sides. So we'll go one there. So about there. I use tweezers because this is so small. So I can cut another piece now a bit shorter. So you just work out how long you want your pieces to be. I think that's good enough. So they are still too long. I, I just sort of got those pieces picked out. So I know that I can trim that to be shorter again and pick that little fella up and sit him here. That's plenty. And this one here I can have to about there. You want them noticeably different lengths. Now to shape the end, I'm just going to come up here away, up here a little bit, and I'm just going to bring my knife down to the center of the bottom and make a little point and another little point. So I'm gonna pull that away so that I am just left with a point and you'll be able to see that there. Now because I've cut off that gold bit, I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to recolor that, but this time I'm going to fill it in at the, at the end so that you'll see that the end of it has got a little gold, a full gold point. Okay, you can see that there, it's a little full gold point. So we'll sit that back there, I'll put it on pointing towards the seven or just before it. Sometimes that's good because you can have a little bit of length to it. And the smallish one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to but make it a shorter point just to there, cutting off those corners. Put it back on my paper and color in the whole bottom of that point. And sit that one over the top. So that's what we're going to end up with. So I'm just going to move these hands over off the center. I'm just going to use the Barely Art Glue because it dries clear and you only need a tiny little bit. So I'm just going to put that right on my center dot, a little bit of that. I need to keep the glue there because we're going to glue down this long hand first here. If you put too much, just take it off with your finger. Put a little speck of glue on the top of the hand now and you need a teeny weeny little dot. Get your second hand and put it where you want it. Face it whichever way you need it to face. Where you've got that glue squished out, it will dry clear. And there's your little clock face finished. It's good to have these all at different times because if you're using them in your journal and you want to use these 
which they are ephemera, you can glue other things over the top. Just say you want to glue a whole pile of flowers on there, you can put them like that. So depending on what time it is on your clock, you can add things to it anywhere you like, you know, and, the, and they'll look pretty good because you've changed that, that time. You're not made everything exactly the same time and it, it will look pretty cute. Now, because these watch hands are so tiny, they, these ones are, these ones were a bit bigger. I found those in, in this little pack, but not all of them are that big. So I went through them and found the bigger ones. So if you have any that have got bigger hands, I suggest that you use them. I might just make a smaller clock face and I'll get that out and we'll put one of these metal hands on a smaller clock face. When I use these clock pieces, I use the E6000. It's a really strong glue and it's good for metal and it will glue to paper. So I just get a little bit out, uh, put it on my non-stick mat and I just get a little bit I use my pokey tool get a little bit of that glue on the pokey tool and even that is too much so you just need a little bit and I'm going to stick that on that center dot you just have to swirl it around a little bit until a little bit drops off it does dry clear as well so I get that off. You do not need very much. Pick up your little tiny watch hand and plonk that on. Get a little bit more glue. You will see a tiny bit of glue on your paper. It's hard to use just a tiny amount. Put a little bit more on the top hand and wipe that off your pokey tool. Pick up any residue glue on your pokey tool will help you pick up your second hand and just stick that into place. Use your fingernail or your tweezers, anything you've got that will help you put that into place and just push it into the center and then just leave it alone. So that's a one inch clock face with tiny little hands and that one there is the one and a half inch. Now there's another little one inch and if you haven't got any hands, glue a flower on it. The flowers look cute on there. You can use your Bailey Art glue, you could use your Fabri-Tac. In Australia, the Helmer fabric glue, you can use that to glue the flowers on. Whatever you've got, if you've got little flowers like this, you can glue any type of paper flower on. They look really pretty and they look fantastic on pockets, on tucks. Or you could use it on the cover. You could use it on an Alice in Wonderland theme. You could use this on so many different themes of any type of journal, anywhere where you need to fill in a little spot that's used for ephemera or any decoration at all. I'm Donna. Thanks for watching and bye for now.